So you're minding your own business one day in your science lab, when suddenly you're bitten by a radioactive spider while being bombarded by gamma rays, just as you inherit several billion dollars worth of advanced robotic warsuits. Congratulations, you and your newfound superpowers and super wealth officially qualify to join one of the most elite evil fighting groups in the universe, the Avengers. But pump your brakes for a second there, hotshot, because while being a superhero may seem like an easy win-win, there's actually a great deal of reasons you may want to turn that membership down and go back to living the life of an average Joe. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Infographic Show. Today we're going to walk you through why being an Avenger would suck. There's no I in team. First and foremost, you can forget about going solo. You're part of Earth's most elite group of defender, we mean Avengers, so you're gonna have to start acting like it. That means no more solo excursions. Got some past grudges to settle? Tough luck, because you're gonna have to run all your superheroing past the rest of the group. As part of an elite organization of superpower wielding badasses, your life will be no different than an employee at a large prestigious company. You now officially represent the team's brand everywhere you go, which means if you want to do anything on your own, you better get approval from the rest of the organization first. The Avengers are a scary thing for most people. On a good day, they're protecting the people of Earth, but on a bad day, the Hulk is out rampaging and smashing millions of dollars of houses and vehicles. This can make the public jittery about the presence of this superpowered group. And so as to not raise the public's ire, you can no longer engage in any behavior which is off-brand for the Avengers. That means a strict code of conduct and ethics both, which must be adhered to at all times and absolutely no going off and doing anything remotely non avengerish including settling old grudges. In fact, your new life is going to mostly revolve around the team, including your free time. If you like taking off on the weekends for long walks in nature to blow steam off and clear your head, you'd better find a new hobby. You're not just an avenger now, you're a huge target for a staggering number of superpowered baddies who all very much want to destroy you and your team, so you can't give them a single opportunity to do so. That means no splitting up, leaving yourself vulnerable to getting captured or killed, or putting the rest of the team in a bind should an emergency arise. In the movies, it might be all fine and well for the group to get all emo and split off on soul-searching excursions, but in real life, all they'd be doing is letting supervillains lay traps to capture each individual member when they're at their weakest, alone. The real Avengers would have to stick together constantly in order to avoid being overpowered and destroyed one by one. Which brings us to the next reason why it would suck to be an Avenger. They're out to get you. If you want to be an Avenger, we hope you're ready to deal with the ever-constant threats against your life, because literally everybody is going to be out to get you, all the time. The Avengers traipse around the world and sometimes other worlds, putting down evil threats day in and day out, and all that superheroing adds up to a whole lot of very pissed off supervillains with huge grudges against them. These villains are going to be plotting their revenges as soon as they're defeated, and as we've seen in some of the movies, those revenges can be quite clever and devastating indeed. Imagine falling into a mastermind revenge plot every single week, because that's what your life is going to be like the moment you hit a critical mass of pissed off bad guys. Returning war veterans often deal with huge amounts of PTSD that can severely affect their personal lives. After living for a few months to a few years in a war zone, constantly on the alert, their nerves are frayed to the point that loud noises can send them into an immediate defensive or violent posture. That's not their fault. Their brains have simply been trained by experience to constantly expect the worst, and in their case, the worst is a hidden IED or insurgent in civilian clothing opening fire unexpectedly. The frayed nerves can make PTSD sufferers break down mentally when triggered, leaving them in a poor emotional state and sometimes making daily life all but impossible, and sometimes the symptoms never fade away. Now imagine engaging in the huge climactic battles the Avengers are called to literally all the time. Your life is in danger constantly from superpowered threats, and you're routinely engaging in massive displays of violence. All that mental stress is going to add up to some serious PTSD. But especially when you consider that then in your day-to-day -day life, you have to be afraid of being ambushed by previous supervillains. You're living your life constantly looking over your shoulders, afraid of any situation that begins to seem even slightly out of the ordinary, and asking yourself if every new person you meet can really be trusted, or if they're just a pawn in some super villain's plan to destroy you and your friends. Still sound like fun being an Avenger? Of course, you could just kill all of your foes and thus ensure that there's no one left to seek revenge. But that brings us to our next point on why being an Avenger is terrible. Paparazzi. All the time. Everywhere. 
you're an Avenger. You're the ultimate public persona, champion of Earth and superhero dedicated to protecting the weak. You're also under the most intense public scrutiny imaginable. Like we mentioned before, you're a good guy with superpowers, and that makes people feel safe. But it also scares them, because the greater your powers, the greater risk you are if one day you decide to stop being such a good guy. The more superpower deeds you conduct, the more fear will grow of what would happen if you ever turned against the unsuperpowered public. To keep public paranoia in check, it's going to be important that you abide by the strictest code of ethics imaginable. You're going to be less superhero and more super alter boy because you can't afford a single lapse in morality or judgment. So when you're up against your bad guy and ready to defeat him, sure, it would be easier to just smite him into next Tuesday and be done with it forever. But remember, people are going to be watching what you do very carefully. If you start offing supervillains left and right, it might be a pretty prudent and permanent solution to evil doing. But it's also going to start ringing some serious alarm bells with the public. And if the public gets scared, eventually that's going to bring the government into the picture. And you may have superpowers, but the government has super billions of dollars to research and develop ways to defeat and contain you. Get the public paranoid enough, and you just might find yourself locked up in a superpower-proof cage deep in a government detention facility somewhere. But it's about more than just exercising proper use of force in the middle of a fight. Even if that means taking a serious ass-kicking on occasion, just so you don't appear like a mass murderer. It's also about your day-to-day -day behavior. You're a public symbol now, and you have to appear incorruptible, not just because everyone looks up to you, but because, again, if you don't play the Boy Scout good enough, the government is definitely going to be coming after you. That means giving up all your vices, because public scrutiny is going to dig into every inch of your life got an embarrassing internet search history, you better find a way to permanently delete it before the millions of hackers who all want to know what the latest superhero is into start hacking into your computer. Starting a new relationship? You better make sure that you have an ironclad non-disclosure contract in place before a spurned lover spills the beans about what you're actually like one-on-one -on -one and that weird stuff you like to do in bed. Enjoy occasionally smoking a cigarette? Forget about it. You're an icon for billions of children around the world now and can't set a bad example anymore. You better be ready for legions of fans and paparazzi to follow your every move. And if you think movie stars have it bad, imagine how much worse the saviors of the planet Earth would have it. Say goodbye to your privacy. Of course, threat of constant death and no more private life are pretty terrible, but neither can compare with the mental stress of actually having superpowers in the first place. Can't save everybody. We've all seen the commercials. For just 32 cents a day, you could ensure that a starving child somewhere has three meals a day. For 32 cents, you can end the daily misery of an innocent child, relieve the stress and pain of a poor parent doing everything they can to keep their child fed and healthy. You'll probably even save that child's life. Starvation is a leading cause of death amongst children in developing nations. What is 32 cents a day to you in your daily life anyways? That's barely $10 a month, and you can really make a difference for less than the price of one fast food meal. You right now have the superpower to ensure one starving child can be saved from starvation, yet most people choose not to do that. If you had real superpowers though, you would gradually become aware of the fact that every day millions of people suffer or die, and all it would take to stop it is one person with superpowers to help them. As you foil evil plot after evil plot, you won't be able to help but grow ever more aware of just how much misery you could personally end with the most minuscule of efforts. Stopping a rapist preying on a young child doesn't take nearly the same effort as toppling Thanos, and yet women and children are raped in staggering numbers every single day. Innocent people are murdered every day. The strong prey on the weak. Gangs push in on neighborhoods and terrorize local families. Natural disasters strike. The list goes on and on, and you could stop any of these things from happening. You could save dozens, hundreds, no, thousands of lives with the least effort. That mental stress is going to be significant, and as time goes on, it'll only build greater and greater. Maybe you do your best though, and put in an honest 12 hours a day fighting crime and saving lives. What about when you want to take a day off? Taking a single day off is going to require you to mentally accept the fact that you are choosing to sit on the couch and play video games while people you could save are dying or being hurt. Try going to a movie and relaxing when you know that in the two hours you sat in that theater, hundreds of people you could have helped suffered needlessly. What we're saying is is that you better have a good shrink, because at first it might seem fine to just blow off the mental stress, but as time goes on, the knowledge of how much evil you could stop is going to grow heavy indeed. Consider Superman. With his super senses, he can literally hear evil being committed, even when he's trying to blow off steam after a hard week of crime fighting by going on a casual date. Good luck enjoying literally anything ever again.
Would you still like to be an Avenger? Let us know in the comments. Also, make sure you check out our other video, You vs Thanos. How could you defeat him? See you next time.